Hello and welcome to today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. I am Inkem Okorgo. Core members across the country have embraced their states of deployment as home. A good number of them have integrated and remained in their states of deployment. They have made a life for themselves, found employment, all employers of labor, created families, formed bonds of friendships and unity. This is evident of the NYSC spirit of national integration. It is an exciting episode. You don't want to miss this. We would be right back. On the news today, the NYSC Director General, Brigadier General Shwaibu Ibrahim, has appealed to core members to adhere strictly to all the COVID-19 safety protocols as they commence their service year. He said the pandemic is a global challenge that must not be trivialized. He stated this while addressing the 2020 Batch B Stream 1A core members deployed to Edo State at the new NYSC Permanent Orientation Camp in Okada, Edo State. The Director General commended the federal government, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, and Nigeria Center for Disease Control for providing all the needed support for the safe reopening of orientation camps nationwide. The Director General was among dignitaries who attended the swearing-in of the 2020 Batch B Stream 1A core members at the new camp with the Deputy Governor, Mr. Philip Schwaibu, standing in for Governor Godwin Obasaki. Welcome back. Today we sit down with the NYSC Enugu State Coordinator, Mr. Obi Sam Unjogo, as he takes us through the laudable activities of core members in the state. Stay with us. The activities of the core members in Enugu State start right from the orientation camp when they arrive and they start uh, undertaking their programs. And basically, they are involved in a SAID program, that is a skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development program, which is a very uh, key program in NYSE. It will interest you to know that uh, most of the especially this period of a pandemic, most of the sanitizers that are being used and which were even donated to the state government were produced by core members. Face mask, liquid soap, and so many other COVID-19 uh, items that were needed, hand gloves and all that. All these things were produced by core members. And so it is really very, very important to emphasize the fact that our core members are doing very, very well. Good day everyone. You'll be wondering what we are doing with this. You will get to know shortly. My name is Oyibo Asmao Emanuela and my colleague here is Emmanuel Chikaje. I am from Kogi State and she's from Anambra State. I am a graduate of economics from Kogi State University, Anyimba, and she's a graduate of civil engineering from Anambra State University. We are here to take you through the journey of our CDS project that we are carrying out here. So you are welcome to our site. Come along with us. The core members uh, have contributed immensely in the area of a CDS program. And uh, just like uh, the one we have just observed of recent, it is quite an interesting one. And in fact, when we visited the place, we saw that it was uh, a very agile female core members. And uh, one would have expected that uh, maybe it would be the male core members that would take up something like that. But just like the saying goes, what a man can do, women can do better. And we saw two female core members undertaking a very gigantic program, trying to renovate a ward in the hospital. In fact, it was fantastic. I was really impressed. So the two of them, I must really commend their effort and I want to really uh, appreciate what they are doing. And I hope that other core members will also key in to undertake such programs because they are really very, very important in the society and beneficial to the society. We dedicate your life. 
Our, the site for our community development service and the place we are right now is the medical hospital for 82 division headquarters Nigerian army we are here to meet a need of renovating this female ward so that it can be conducive for patients that will be coming in now I will start with the bed the bed then um, the bunks for this bed were not really okay so we started by repainting it to become new and for it to look attractive you know when a sick person is in a place the conduciveness and colors around we help this person to heal faster also we changed this paint we renewed it from you can see the color combination it was painted with gloss oil paint emulsion and also gloss here we also paint, repainted the windows and these light bulbs, we, we, we changed them too. We also have intention of demarcating each bed for privacy. We are still in the journey of achieving that, but that is one of our aim. This is a public ward, as you can see, there are many beds here. But what we intend to do at the end of this project is that each bed will have its privacy through the demarcation using cutting. Each cutting will now be covering each bed so that every patient will have their privacy to themselves. Also, we did a lot of work in the toilet. You can see the door that's been repainted. Come in. This washing hand basin here, previously it did not have this pedestal. So we, we had to buy this and also fix it in and also change this tap for easy access and also to provide safety because this thing might even fall off. Also, we did something here. Come in. The shower was old and the water was not running. So we also got a plumber, since we cannot do it ourselves, to help us fix it. You can see a new um, shower here. The water is also running now. So you can see the toilet is also worked on. Two of them, we changed um, the shower. Now this toilet. You can see that the toilet seat is new. The cover, the cover was was already off, it was no longer here. So we changed the toilet cover. Also, we made um, available this handle and all the accessories inside so that it can flush. So that someone will not have, someone that is sick, that wants to ease themselves, will not have to go out and fetch water. So that we have also created a solution for this problem. You can see. We did it for two, the two of them. We did it for um, the two of them. Also, this place, we created a channel for this water to pass here. Initially, the cleaners, when they clean this toilet, the waters um, get um, stopped here. So they have to use packers to pack it. So here, you can now see the, the channel we created. Everything will pass through here. So our major aim was to make this ward a modern standard so that other ward too can be, um, take an example from it to create a conducive environment for patients that come to patronize this military hospital. And this is the CDS project that we are carrying out here. So My name is Emmanuel Chika Jin. I'm from Anambra State. I study civil engineering. Now, I'm doing a finishing touch of what the painter we paid already did. Now, this suspended ceiling. You might ask why we didn't use PVC, POP, or other ceilings. But the reason why we use suspended ceiling is because we found out that suspended ceiling is now the raining ceiling one. And secondly, if it gets spoiled, or maybe if your roof leaks, or your roof is leaking, you can remove it. You can remove one of it and go to the market to replace it with another one instead of removing the entire ceiling like other ones are. So that was the reason why we use suspended ceiling. The reason for the light is it doesn't emit heat and it doesn't consume much energy. So that was why we used it. We are very, very happy because initially we thought we were going to 
like use our money to sponsor this. So we came together and felt, okay, yes, we'll connect together and do this. But at the long run, we found out that we can source for fun from our host community and happily our host community is a very better place to be. They supported us and encouraged us to carry out this personal project. NYSC has given me a great opportunity to be here and they already taught me a lot of things and has given me the mind and the heart to do things for people. So I'm very, very happy and honored to serve in the D2 division. So we are very, very happy. Amazing stuff. Well done to you both. Certainly, their project has enhanced the living standards of the patients of 82 Division Medical Service Hospital. And this is indeed what the NYSC is about, service to humanity. You can do the same thing too. You too can add value. No value is too small to make a difference. We move on to the story of Ajayi Rafael, an ex co member from Oyo State, who served in Nasarawa State. He is the MD CEO of RAF Tech Communication in Nasarawa State. As you might have guessed, yes, he did not return to Oyo State after his service here. He is fully integrated in Nasarawa State, where he runs his ICT enterprise. He's also a SAID trainer and an employer of labor. Stay with us. My name is Ajay Rafael, the MDC of Rafter Communication. I'm from Oyo State, precisely the Swaji local government. I came for service around February 2010 and I finished service February 2011. So after that service, I decided to stay back. Back then in 2010, I came to Nasrallah State for NYC service. Then after the service, in the camp it was very fun. We don't have this privilege, the core members nowadays are enjoying. The issue of Saeed is not there by that time. So we just serve, and with the little money we are getting, 9,800 or thereabout is the money we are paid by that time. So I have to calculate since I already have a skill before and I have, a, I have a plan already in my mind that I must not settle down in my father's house. I must make sure even if it's just a single room I can be able to erect for myself. I settle down and marry my wife there, not to live in my parents' house. So this has been my, my passion and my desire. Uh, immediately after the NYC, the Zena, Zona Eli by then, which is called Mrs. Tende. She has been a very good mother to us. She took us like her home when we came to the town. So after that we are done with service, she, she got to know I'm managing here. So sometimes her phone, her husband's phone is having problems. They bring it for me, I fix. So at the time, Said came on board. And I said, okay, we have some call members that have finished service, they are still in town. She's the one who is now in charge that mobilized facilitator for them by then, 2012 that they should come and train core members and also encourage them to stay back because there is no government job anywhere. So they can still rely and have a plan B for themselves. So I was now privileged to be among the first set that was introduced to Saeed in the camp, which will impact. I have to pack all my gadget, projector, system, laptop, and also the phone so with some accessories or tools we use in fixing system and phone, which we took to camp. I was not afraid because I already prepared myself. So I go to the camp, I have a slide of all those things on the handle, how to format a laptop, how to unlock a laptop password, fix phone problem, then do some things and make money under ICT. So this has been what I did then. From that period, it has been awesome too. Going to camp, seeing yourself in front of graduates, it has been an, a, a wonderful experience while we are doing the, the Sahid. know any other side in the camp that always pull crowd like the way we did. So the passion for, you look for latest things people want to hear. For example, your brother is in the US, they send the phone for you from abroad. How do you go about unlocking it? You have a flash, flash drive. How do you expand a flash drive of four gig to eight gig? 
and how do you solve problem on phone and system which everybody is using every day. So they cannot do without being under that lecture for them to see the secret behind it and make money on their own. So most times we always have 500 per, per, per class. If you are taking the class, sometimes 500. At the time, they ask, okay, this population is getting too large. Let's see how we can split the class into two. So somebody will handle section here, another person will handle section B. So that's how the most time is 500, 300, two, the least is always 200 and something that we always get because they always fall in love on, with ICT. Everybody has to be computer literate. No job, nobody's ready to employ any graduate now without knowledge of ICT. Graphic design, computer engineering, networking, web design, and all these rechargeable printing business too. So all these are what we introduce to them and how to put a CCTV camera in the house for organization for them to secure the environment using this surveillance too. So all these are stuff we do, which always motivate core members to participate and make the class always very large. We have been privileged to train more than 15,000 core members based on the series of batches that are coming out. In a year, you might even have up to 5,000. Before I decided to come to Raftec, I was actually studying somewhere else in AGY Plaza here in Kefi. And then when I, where I went, they were not able to impact a good knowledge in me. I had a classmate who studied here and then he was able to inspire, he was even able to go outside the country to represent Nigeria. So I decided to come and then I came. Our guy here has also been a good person. He has inspired so many into us. He also inspires us with things we don't pay for. After I left um, camp, so I decided to like to just do more on it and like have a broader knowledge of of ICT. I've been looking forward to to like improving my ICT skills and everything. So and RAF is RAF tech communication is very good. I've learned a lot so far. I've really learned a lot in a very short while. I never knew I would go this far. I'm really grateful to NYC for giving us this side and opportunity. It's a, it's a good privilege for me to to be part of those that will share this testimony and also share my experience as a success story. If I've not been privileged to partner with NYC, this success I'm mentioning now, I won't be able to have achieved it. Working with NYC has also given us privilege to meet a lot of people and also take us to many places. So it's a very good opportunity working with NYC up to this moment. Can you believe it? He has trained over 15,000 core members. What a ripple effect that is in itself. Well done, Raphael. We move on to another inspiring entrepreneurial story of Oladero Ololade. Ololade is an ex core member from Lagos State who served in Delta State back in 2014. She took full advantage of the NYSC SAID program and is today the CEO of Renik Originals. It has a ring to it, right? <laughs> Let's meet Lolade. Hello everyone. My name is Olade Lolade. I'm from Ikorodu Local Government of Lagos State. I'm a graduate of microbiology from Adekunle Ajashi University. I came to Delta State as a core member in 2014. And during my service year, I was able to acquire skills in bead making, bag making, and footwear making under the Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development SAID. And today, I'm so happy to welcome you to my world, Renik Originals. Here at Renik Originals, we produce a lot of beautiful things. Here are some of our Ankara bags of different designs. Here are leather bags made to taste and specification. Here is also an example of footwear made for a customer. Very beautiful, very exquisite. I'll permit me to introduce you to my manager, Omo. Omo, say hello. hello. All right. So I'm going to take you into the workshop where my students are working tirelessly to learn a skill. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, so here are the trainees of Renik Originals, and 
This is Ike, she's working on the sewing machine. This is Adura. This is Ose. Ose, say hello to the camera. This is Esther. This is one of our facilitators, Oye. Also working to train them and put them in the right path. This is still missing. As you can see, they are all busy. Before coming to camp, I actually just had a basic idea in bag making just out of interest and all that. But I did not know that I was going to be trained. When I got to camp, the skill acquisition department started creating awareness and encouraged us to learn. But before now, I've actually been this kind of person that felt I would work with my certificate and be focused and all that. But to my greatest surprise, when I started learning, it was interesting and I started making business in it, people were patronizing and also I thank God I learned and here I am today. I don't actually train only core members, I train everybody from all walks of life and but right now you can see only the core members on ground because they have a timetable and today is their training day. So far so good, I've been able to train about 3,000 core members both in the in-camp and post-camp training. Then for the non-core non members, I've been able to train over 50 people and still counting. And I appreciate the willingness of people to acquire a skill. It's been beautiful and I thank God for it. I'm so glad that I came here. I met her in camp, I saw her works and I really admired her and I was like, oh wow. I must learn about this. I'm someone that actually likes fashion. I like bags, footwear, leather earrings, Ankara earrings, Ankara bags. So I decided to join a class and from there I came here to our shop to learn more. And it's been very, very inspiring. She teaches us um, male footwear, both shoes, slippers, sandals, and you can bet that they are the best as her name implies, Renic Originals. And she takes us on bags too. We make souvenir bags, purse, traveling bag, lunch box, makeup key, makeup box, and school bag. And since I've been here, I've really gained a lot. Like this footwear, I make it myself just now. This bag is being made by me. In bag making, she really tried to teach us well. Because sometimes when I see people carrying bags, I look at it, most bags are being imported to the country. But I can bet it with you that many Originals bag is far, far more better than some of the bags we import to this country. Our quality is of standard. With this, I can establish myself and make it in this country. My brother Swedi is coming up next month and I want to show him what I'm learning because I told him this is what I'm learning. In my brother's wedding, I'm doing a souvenir post, about 100 souvenir posts to support him for the wedding. That's what I'm doing to support him. What struck me towards coming here was um, Miss Loladi came to uh, CDS and she introduced herself and one person just told me that um, this lady is good. Can you just try putting for the class? And that was how we started. I just came here within some months, getting back home because I'm staying with the um, Nigerian Christian Copper Fellowship Lodge getting back home, telling people what I do, they were really amazed, especially one of my coach, the person of Joshua Sauer, seeing what I do, they just said, can we just put all these things online? And I cannot lie to you, because of that, many people have been calling me, even from Lagos, telling me that this thing you are doing, can you please just send it to us? And it has enabled me to be able to, plan it now, to be able to weigh with some of the materials. We are into bags, shoes, and the one I specialize in mostly is leather work, gum work, souvenirs and i also like this one because i'm a christian people also patronize me for that is not part i did one last week and people in the church really loved it especially my pastors so uh, we've been doing very well in this academy and it's a good one for us to be sincere at this stage i'm not going to do for a white collar job because now i'm not actually looking for someone to employ me rather i'm employing people as i've taken you around i've showed you my staff i've showed you my students so I don't think there's any need to look for a white collar job. For me, I'm not looking for a white collar job. I'm focusing on my business. I want to advise 
prospective core members. The moment you get to come, prioritize skill acquisition. There are many qualified people there to give you this skill. And I personally believe that every Nigerian needs a skill, either as a full job, full-time job, or a side also. So as a prospective core member, once you get to camp, please acquire a skill. Then as a serving core member, devote that one year of your life to acquiring a skill. It will really help you. Like I said earlier, personally, I didn't see myself to be an entrepreneur, but today I am. And it has been, uh, been a great benefit to me. I've benefited a lot from it. So my advice to coppers, please take skill acquisition seriously. Regardless of your course of study, as a doctor, as a lawyer, you need a skill. I say a big thank you to NYC as a whole for giving me the privilege to discover the inbuta, inborn talent in me. I also thank Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development, say it, for the privilege to expose youth coppers to learning a skill. And I just say long live NYC, long live say it. Thank you. Long live the NYSC, long live SAID, and long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you for investing your time with us on today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. We would love to hear from you. Please write to us. Write to us on the online handles displayed on your screens right now, and we would write back. Remember, the safety of core members in our communities is the responsibility of you and I. Until I see you next time, I am in Kem Okwago. Stay safe.